Hey guys, Crypto Dad here, and tax season is upon us. I have with me today a special guest, Andrew Gordon. He is a tax attorney and a CPA, and I wanted to talk to him about some of the most common issues that people have when they're filing their taxes and crypto is involved. So thank you for being here and taking the time to talk to me today. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> So the first question that I wanted to ask you, what is your involvement with crypto? Do you own crypto? Um, how long have you been involved with uh, crypto and crypto taxes? Sure. So I personally got into crypto probably around 2012 or so. Uh, wow. First buying Bitcoin um, and then slowly getting into Ethereum and a couple of others. Back then, there really weren't many others. Um, but as a firm, we first got involved in crypto late 2013, early 2014. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, back then we started doing crypto tax reporting for clients because we were finding that people were becoming very active in crypto, yet there was very little information out there about how to report. Um, yet at the same time, there was generally, um, uh, it was known that you had to report. So we were there trying to bridge that gap for people. What are the basics when we're dealing with cryptocurrency ownership? Uh, what makes crypto taxable? Uh, what do we need to be aware of when we're dealing with crypto on a day-to-day -day basis? And uh, what are the things that we need to be aware of when we go to report our crypto transactions and pay our taxes on our crypto? Back in 2014, the IRS said crypto is property. And because of that, it's taxed like property is. Um, and so let's start with just the basics. You're not taxed when you hold it. So if you buy Bitcoin with cash, that's not a taxable event. And then you hold on to it, also not taxable. Even if the price of that Bitcoin went up massively at year end, you're not taxed until you actually sell it or exchange it or convert it or spend it or do anything with it uh, other than generally transfer it or hold it. So as long as you're holding, no taxable event. But any conversion, one crypto to another, crypto to fiat, crypto to a cup of coffee, um, crypto to uh, uh, a friend who performs services for you. Any of these events taxable and will be reported on your tax return. And on your tax return, you don't just report the total of your crypto, you report each line item. Every time you, you sold, exchanged, disposed of the crypto, it's a separate line item. And so for some people, it could be pages of transactions that are attached to your tax return. Um, so that's the most basic is that every time that you trade or exchange, that's a taxable event. And the way that it's calculated is that you originally have a purchase price and that is known as your cost basis. And then later when you sell it, that is your sales price and your gain or loss is calculated as the difference between your purchase price or cost basis and the later sales price. And if that price went up, then you've got a gain. If it went down, you have a loss. And in the U S you're taxed on gains losses are helpful and you should certainly report them um, but you're only taxed when you have gains okay and uh how have you navigated the irs guidelines over that time they've changed uh, quite a bit or they pretty much stayed mostly unclear <laughs> <laughs> um i would say overall um it has gotten clear uh, but there are still a lot of areas that are not as clear as we would like so the IRS in 2014, it's crazy how time flies, but 2014 hmm. first said that crypto is property and not a currency. Okay. And all of the regulations that came thereafter followed and built upon that. And as a result, crypto is taxed and treated much like the sale of stocks or other pr property and not like a currency. When you use dollars to buy a, a sandwich or a cup of coffee, hmm. you're not calculating a gain or loss. All right. the value of the dollar changes all the time. Yeah. So the IRS said crypto is not in fact a currency. It's more akin to property. Um, and so it needs to be taxed that way. And that was back in 2014. And over the years, they have issued more guidance on several different topics, uh, including on airdrops and forks, and also an FAQ that uh, answers many of the common questions. But there are still many new things that happen every year that the IRS hasn't issued guidance on. And so mm -hmm. we're often trying to figure out how do these new types of activities fall within the old guidance that was issued? Are you using an online software 
uh, when people uh, submit their taxes to you? Is it something you customized uh, or are you just having them submit like wallet addresses so you can track their wallets or APIs on their exchanges? Or are they are you asking them to create kind of an Excel spreadsheet? How do you get your client data and what guidance do you give your clients to accumulate that data? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So tax reporting for crypto, it's a pain. And mm. you unfortunately need to report every transaction. Every mm. time you've had a trade, a sale, or you received income, or you even bought a, cu- a cup of coffee, that's still a taxable and reportable mm. event. And so to get all of that data together and report, especially if you have several different exchanges or wallets or even different platforms, it can be a mess. Hmm. And depending on the client's activity, we often look at a few different software programs. Hmm. Um, But in many situations, the client's activities, once they get into things like DeFi or NFTs, the software out there just isn't compatible yet. And so we do a lot of the work manually. But that said, we've been doing it for years. We're very efficient at it. And we'll typically ask our clients to provide us the raw transaction files from the exchanges or their wallet addresses. And then we can pull the data and take it from there. But Hmm. unfortunately, nowadays, a lot of the work still has to be done in Excel by us. But we do that heavy lifting for our clients. Uh, Well, that makes a lot of sense. So uh, if you don't mind me getting into particulars, uh, I did want to just bring up the... uh, question, because I get this question a lot, is uh, what about uh, when people are staking on DeFi exchanges and what about when they're trading NFTs? I don't know if there's any way to stake NFTs uh, to earn income or anything like that. But uh, as far as those finer points, uh, how do you handle that? Sure. So let's go through those one by one. So first, with respect to staking, it's taxed as income okay. at the fair market value at the time that it's earned. So if you're using a, a staking platform and you're earning rewards every six minutes or whatever the timing may be, you actually have a taxable event each time. Wow. And the value is whatever the crypto is worth. So as you're staking, you're earning income, not when you sell it, not when you exchange it, wow. but as it's being earned. And okay. that's very important for those of you out there that are watching this that might be staking, because what we've seen happen is if the price of crypto goes down drastically or goes down at all, you'll still owe the tax based on the initial price when you first received it. And mm. 2022 was a down year for nearly everyone. Right. And so what we saw is that many people had a bill, tax bill for 2021 staking, and then in 2022, it lost most of its value. So that's where some tax planning opportunities come in to try to minimize that risk. But yes, it's it's income at that time, not when you pay taxes, not when you sell, none of those things. Wow. <laughs> yeah. This is more enlightening than I had hoped. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh, let me, uh, I, I'll, I'll put my uh, case out there for you. Uh, I'm unique in the fact that I'm, I do a lot of videos And uh, when I do those videos, I want to show people exactly what's going on. So I'll create a wallet sometimes, maybe an empty wallet, and then I'll fund the wallet. And uh, after I'm done with the video, I'll empty out the wallet. And uh, so I have a lot of these what you might call dead wallets. And not to mention the fact that I'm, you know, heavily into crypto and I'm looking at a new coin. And so... I'll go out and I'll buy the coin and create a, a new wallet for it. So I'm always trying out exotic wallets uh, for myself and doing demos for my videos and ending up with dead wallets. So uh, that was one of the challenges that I encountered um, when I was doing my crypto tax software. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my, my case is a little out there. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges that uh, some of your clients have faced? Yeah, no, I think you hit on a big one, which is missing or lost data. Hmm. And that's one of the biggest issues that we have also for clients in generating accurate reports, because it's important to have all that data. Uh, The good news is that in many situations, we can trace back and identify old wallets or old platforms that were used, and then hopefully get that data 
and, and fill in those gaps. So for instance, the blockchain, it's, it's an immutable ledger that exists hopefully forever. Um, and so we can see the transfers, we can see withdrawals and deposits between wallets. And then we can provide our clients with a list of uh, wallet addresses that had transfers over the years. And hopefully we can together identify ones that were actually your wallets uh, versus your friends or things like that. Um, but it is very possible to reconstruct that data, not only for us, but also for the IRS. And that's why we are doing this. And that's to avoid future IRS scrutiny or audit or anything like that. Um, and what we've found is by reporting as much as you can, as thoroughly as can, you can, that typically you'll avoid uh, IRS scrutiny. On the other hand, if you re report only a part of your data, and say you had Coinbase, Binance, and uh, FTX, and you only report Coinbase, you're at a very high risk for audit in that situation. Um, but again, we can often find that data, work backwards and identify it. And in the situations where we just absolutely can't, the data is gone, it's lost, the exchange is gone, whatever it may be, um, it's still often that we can use assumptions. For instance, maybe we can identify transfers into that closed exchange or wallet and transfers out um, just because we have all the other wallets. Well, if we know what went in and what went out, we must be able to calculate what happened inside. So. Um, in most situations, even with partial data or incomplete data, we're able to uh, reconcile it and get pretty accurate numbers. Uh, the IRS doesn't expect 100% accuracy. They understand crypto has all of these variables and you could have hundreds of thousands of transactions in some situations, but they do expect you to have uh, to use your best efforts and obtain any of the data and records that are available. Because if you can obtain it with limited effort, so too can the IRS. And we're seeing that more and more as well, that the IRS is getting more and more data from exchanges, platforms, even bankrupt exchanges that are foreign. Um, so it's very important to get all that data. So on my channel, I'm a big advocate of self-custody. It's always best to store crypto in your own wallet. So one of the questions that I get from a lot of my users is, what about when you buy crypto on an exchange and transfer it into your own wallet? Is that a taxable event? Yeah. So if you buy crypto and then transfer it to a wallet or another exchange, as long as it's yours, it's not a third party, it's yours, then it's just a self-transfer. And that's not a taxable event. You could think about it like moving cash from one bank account to another. Um, you're just moving the location, but it's not taxable. Um, similarly, just holding, also not taxable. So if you buy, put it on a wallet, um, in most situations, there's nothing to report. So another situation that I personally encounter is sometimes I get paid in crypto. Uh, for example, I have an affiliate link with uh, some of the wallet manufacturers and when I generate revenue for them through my link, I get paid directly in crypto. So how does that work on my taxes when I'm paid directly in some form of crypto? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And this is uh, one of the questions that the IRS has also answered, um, I think on the FAQ and perhaps in other locations as well. But if you're performing services, you're either an employee, an independent contractor, or you're just doing services for compensation, and you're paid in crypto, it's just the same as if you were paid in cash. Whatever the value of that crypto was at the time you received it, at that exact time of the day that you received it, that's the amount of income that you would report on your tax return. So even if you don't convert it, don't sell it, still income to you. And that's why it's important to consider the tax implications because if the value of Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever it was that you got paid in goes down, you still owe the tax based on that initial price when you received it. So I understand that your office is in Illinois, and if I lived in the area, I could just come right in and deal directly with you face-to-face. -face. But uh, I'm sure that you can handle doing taxes for anyone in the 50 states. Uh, how would that work? Uh, how would you handle doing tax preparation for someone that's not local to your office? We actually do taxes for people not only in the 50 states, but taxes for clients all over the world, as long as it's U.S. taxes. We don't do foreign taxes. But even if you're residing outside the U.S., we'll also help you. 
Um, some of our clients are local and it's awesome to meet them face to face. Uh, we are in an office, our staff is in office as well, but most of our clients we interact with virtually um, and that works just fine. The data is electronic. We want it to be transmitted to us electronically. Even if you are local, we would ask you to bring a digital file and not print it out. Um, so it, the process usually begins with us uh, requesting the data from our clients. So we'll walk through either on the phone or email, all of the different exchanges or wallets that were used, and then we can help provide instructions on how to get the data that we need from each of these. And if that's difficult or um, we run into issues, we can also do a screen share and walk through how to get that data. But getting the data is one of the first steps. From there, our team will reformat it, we'll make adjustments, we'll go through and identify what's taxable, what's not, where do we have self-transfers versus a spend? Um, but along the way, we'll identify transactions that we don't know about um, because the blockchain doesn't say you bought uh, a computer on newag.com. It may say, say that it was transferred out to an unknown wallet, but we don't know what happened. And so we'll ask the client for, uh, a, for a series of transactions to identify what they are. And again, if the client doesn't know, we'll work through it. And often there are things that we just can't remember. Um, but ultimately, we'll generate tax reports that identify gains, losses, income, or other tax attributes as well. And for the majority of our clients, we not only do the crypto, but we'll also prepare the tax returns. So the federal and then also all 50 states, uh, we can prepare tax returns as well, although many states do not have uh, uh, state ta income taxes. So uh, we can help with all the above. So when you talked about data gathering with your clients, it made me think about some of the viewers on my channel that have contacted me with questions and concerns, and they're not always that tech savvy. We generally think about people involved in crypto as being young, hip, and intuitive with technology, but that's not always the case. There are a lot of crypto owners and traders that are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s and not that comfortable with technology. I use a lot of the crypto tax reporting software services to generate my tax forms and give them to my tax accountant, but it's not always easy. And a lot of uh, the videos that I've done on that subject get a lot of questions with people that are really not that comfortable with technology in general. How do you help clients that come to you that are having issues with not being that tech savvy? Yes, we have a lot of clients that are not very tech savvy. Um, perhaps they know how to trade crypto, but when it comes to other aspects of um, using technology, they have some difficulties. We're very used to it. Um, we have administrative staff that walks our clients through downloading things um, if they have difficulties. We also provide very detailed instructions. We try to make it as easy as possible. Um, but if all else fails, we can do a screen share where we can see what's on your computer. We never want logins. We never want private keys. We don't want your passwords, but we can guide you through what to click on your computer. So you keep all that information uh, yourself. But um, we completely understand that that may be a, a difficulty that a lot of people have. Um, and we're here to walk you through it. That's why you come to us as professionals. Um, there are still going to be parts that you'll need to help us through, but we'll do all of the, the heavy lifting for you. Uh, but also I wanted to mention, uh, you brought up that often people will have CPAs or accountants that will do their tax returns, but don't know how to do their crypto. And in most situations, it makes sense, just as you'd have a professional do your taxes, to also have a professional do your crypto. The crypto in many situations is more complex, has more tax rules, has more ambiguities, uncertainties, things that need to be addressed than even the tax return. And so if you're going to go to a professional for that, it makes sense to use someone and not do it yourself. Um, it's almost like using TurboTax um, at best when you're using the tax software uh, for crypto. Um, it's all dependent on how you answer the questions and you don't know what you don't know. Um, so we do suggest to many people that if you do have a variety of exchanges, wallets, trades, different things going on, use a professional to help you generate those reports. That brings up an important point. In addition to not being very tech savvy, some older clients may already have tax accountants and CPAs that they've been working with for years 
They know them, they're comfortable with them, and they trust them. But those CPAs may not know that much about crypto taxes. How can you help them bridge the gap and get their taxes done if they want to continue to use the tax accountant that they've been working with for years? Yeah, absolutely. So if you have a tax preparer, a CPA that you want to continue working with, and perhaps they don't know crypto, um, or even they're scared by crypto, that is A-OK. -okay. We are used to it. Happens all the time. We can help with just the crypto portion of your taxes and generate gain loss reports um, so that that crypto can be included in the rest of your taxes. And even more than that, if your accountant, again, is afraid of crypto, doesn't know what crypto is, we'll generate a transmittal letter to the accountant that walks them through what to enter where. So it should be as simple as just including any other tax form. So they don't even need to understand or know how to pronounce Bitcoin. And they'll be OK. I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else. Is there anything else you think you'd like to put out there? So we hit on a lot of great topics. Um, one other common one that comes up is what do you do if you haven't reported crypto in the past and you had crypto trades to report? Uh, hmm. And our advice to those out there is that the IRS is becoming more and more aggressive with crypto enforcement. Hmm. You may even notice after your name and address on your tax form, the Form 1040, it asks yes or no whether you had crypto activity. Hmm. That shows just how important crypto is to the IRS. And so if you're watching this and you think to yourself, well, maybe I had some crypto that needed to be reported. It's not too late. You can still amend your prior tax returns, come forward to the IRS. It's a fairly simple process and report those uh, crypto activities, pay any tax and move on from there. And that way you'll have a proper foundation going into future years and have it all reported. Um, and we've been very successful in having our clients do so and avoid future problems with the IRS. On the other hand, we've seen, and I'm not trying to scare everyone out there, but it's just the reality that if you don't report, you don't take these steps, the IRS is getting that information and can issue a notice, an audit, or even worse. So um, if you haven't done so, reach out to a tax professional to explore those options. Uh, I've had some encounters myself and uh, some of uh, my users that have contacted me who have been scammed. Um, and generally the scam works something like, uh, somebody from the IRS contacted me, threatened to put me in jail unless I, uh, send them my crypto or gave them my backup phrase or gave them my bank account information. Uh, and I've told them, you know, the, the IRS doesn't call you up and threaten to put you in jail. They generally will send you a letter and uh, maybe informing you that you might get audited, but they're never going to outright just threaten to put you in jail uh, without having first done an audit. Uh, maybe, uh, and that's just my perception of it. Could you uh, give a clearer picture of how the uh, IRS operates and how to avoid scams in that sense? Sure, absolutely. So the first thing to keep in mind is the IRS does not accept crypto for tax payments. So if someone is asking you on behalf of the IRS or another tax authority to send crypto, that's already a warning sign and mm. almost certainly is a scam. The yeah. IRS does not accept crypto. It doesn't matter even if you're a crypto business or you're an active crypto trader, the IRS does not accept it. Um, so that, that's number one. Also, um, typically the IRS will begin a civil audit with sending a notice, a letter saying that we've started an audit. Please get in touch with us. The IRS does not call people, um, at least as a, a first reach out, um, for exactly that reason. Um, in some very limited circumstances where there's perhaps a criminal investigation or potential fraud, then the IRS may show up to your house. Um, and if the IRS shows up to your house and hands you a business card and introduces themselves as an IRS agent, then it makes sense to call us. Uh, or call a tax uh, professional and not speak to them any further. But that's in very, very limited circumstances. So almost always it's a notice, it's a letter being sent to you. Uh, they, they won't call you, they won't demand payment, nothing like that. And if they do and you're ever uncertain, reach out to a tax professional to get in touch with the IRS through the normal channels to verify whether or not 
this person is legitimate. So thanks again for coming, Andrew. I appreciate you answering all of my questions. You filled in a lot of the blanks that I had concerning crypto and taxes, and I'm sure you helped answer a lot of questions that my viewers had as well. Um, I'm going to put a link to your services down in the description of my video. Anyone that's interested can click that link and get in touch with you guys if they need help with their crypto taxes. But no, this was great. And uh, yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, you very much for having me. Sure. Thank you, Andrew. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.